Hi, uh, for the benefit of users who want to um, start using NC Simul very uh, quickly, uh, we're going to show you here uh, the very uh, simple steps in order to set a machine up and get simulation going. Um, what uh, what what is involved into making a project is to actually choose a CNC machine, set up the tools. Uh, define a rough and put it on the, put it on the table using a vice. Then uh, input the initializing parameters and load the program and simulate. So let's just do that this without any further delay. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go and get a um, a Haas mini mill. You just drag it from the resource window here to the uh, job window that's underneath. Everything is drag and drop. Everything you defined will be defined in the resources, then loaded on the job. <coughs> so, um, in our example, we need to have the following tools. T1, which is a half-inch, uh, 90-degree spot drill. We're going to have T2, which is going to be a 1964-inch uh, drill. Uh, T3 then will be a 516th reamer. Uh, T4 will be a, um, uh, a drill, a F drill, 0.201. Uh, T5 will be 316th of an inch drill. T6, a half inch countersink, 82 degrees. T7, a, a 38 flat end mill. And uh, T8, 516th. 7 16th flat end mill t9 half inch chamfer mill so let's build the tool library if you go at home you have a creation window here when where you can start uh building tools so we're going to call this uh cam3 cam3 is my library up now this is very easy to fill in you have your uh, window here, the top, top banner, where you can start by selecting, for example, a, a new milling tool, which is this icon here. And here we have access to the different types of tools. In our case, the first tool is going to be a half inch, 90 degree. spot drill so it's very easy you just uh, select the tool type and enter the parameters so this could be like uh, two inches and this could be two inches two and a half inch very important to um, put in the right parameters if you want you can uh, put an extension Put a tool holder on top of this, uh, access the various parameters. So here, just for the sake of this example, we won't use any of those. And then um, I'll create tool number two, which is a 1964 drill. So I go back to the tool definition tab, choose the drill. I can even enter the value in this way that's my tool number two tool number three we said was a 5 16th reamer so I choose reamer here and it's going to be 5 16th And here's the reamer. If you um, if look at the edge, you can see the edge here defined at 45 degrees. So save. 
then we'll create the um, the F drill which is literally point two oh one so point two oh one there we go tool number five is a three sixteen drill sorry 316th drill tool number six is going to be a half inch countersink 82 degrees so here is going to be an 82 degrees countersink half inch Tool number seven, a three eight flat end mill, three eighths. So now we're going to create uh, tool number eight, which is a uh, seven sixteen flat end mill. So tool number eight is a seven sixteenth flat end mill. And then we'll create another one. Our last one is gonna be a half inch chamfer mill. And there we go. We've just created our library. Now the library has been stored into the tool uh, library uh, in the resource window called camlib. So what I'll do is I'll just drag it right there on the screen. Now what we need to define here is uh, the rough stock and uh, the rough stock here now let's define the rough stock the rough stock is a six by six by three quarters so we go to our creation window get the stock give it a new name and simply define it by using this creation window I create a block here by default the blocks are like four by four by four inches if I go to more here I can define the size what happens here is that the zero of each of those uh, defined or uh, y x y and x max and y max the um, as soon as I put my definition my zero will sit right in the middle or right in the zero position whereas the, the actual x0, y0, and z0 is. This is what's going to help us define our G54 later. And there we go. G54 is supposed to, in our project, has been defined to be sitting in the x0, y0, and z0 position. So this is the rough for our example. Let's click on OK. Go back to our resource window because this is where the new rough we just defined has been stored. And we drag it on the table. So as you see here, if I zoom in, that rough is sitting right right into the um, the uh, the table. So what I'll do is I'll set its position here. I can click on set position. I do right click, set position, 
and then I can move this thing around. I'll move it up high enough. And what I will do now is I will go back to my resources and get a clamp supplied with your your um, your sample program here. You have a clamp vise, which is in your clamp here resources. If you look at my, your resources, you got machine tools, clamps, roofs, parts, and programs. So you go to clamps. I think we'll get your vise. I'll get my vise here. And I'll put the vice on the table. Again, this vice now appears in space somewhere. It's it's embedded in the, but you see here. So let's move those two devices. So as I do set position by right clicking, I'll just show you again. So here, by right-clicking, if I go on on the um, on the program here uh, in my job window, if I right-click on on this, I get the set position, which is one uh, one of those things that you use often. Just don't forget about it. Then here, I'm going to select those two uh, items. Let me just get rid of that window. I'm just going to select those two items here. Because they, they're the, the boat that I want to move. So what I'll do is I'll move them up, 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 up. As you see, they have just departed from the table. And then I'm going to lower those two units so they make contact with the mini mill. As soon as there's an interference between those two solids, this vice remains on the table. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select just the movable part of that clamp here and open it up. So by selecting the various elements that are in space here, I can move them around. I can play with them using this interface. Here's a rotation. Don't use that. We're just going X, Y for now. So I'm going to open that vise. You see here, I'm opening the vise. Now what I need to do is take that rough here. So I'll select the rough. Move it sideways a little bit along the x-axis. I'll double click on that wall here and make it invisible so I can see what I'm doing. So he <clears throat> here I'm going to just move this, um, this component, lower it on the vise. Oh. Let's not forget to say with contact with the fixed part of the clamp, we're going to move down and then we're going to move sideways along the Y axis. And you see, as soon as it touches the clamp here, it can't move any further. Now we're going to close that clamp onto that rough again, select that movable item make sure that it stops moving when it makes contact with the rough and then move it there we go simple so now our machine is almost uh, finished setting up i'll get the project window back on very nice and we're just missing two things here. We're going to put the um, the program in there. So here I go get my program, which is Chem Test Final. Drag it. And then you're, you will see there's all sorts of errors everywhere. The reason is in this uh, syntax error windows, it checks for all the over travels and whatnot. And this is mainly due to the fact that I've not defined yet my zero. So, when you go to your resource window here, 
there's a tab called function. As soon as I open this, I have access to what we call the initialization file. The initialization file is nothing more or less than a way to input all those parameters, like those compensation parameters, the zero parameters, as you would on a control panel. This is the interface where, if I look at this, I can define the various compensations and, and whatnot. And here, if I click on origin, got to click on the origin tab, you're going to change the origins definition on the G54 to be the ones, the, the coordinates of the zero of the component, the rough, I mean. As well, you're going to choose the G55 because there's also a G55 used in this program. They're both at the same spot. Those errors are not important to look at. Those are more like messages. So let's get just rid of this uh, window here. Hey, as you can see, the um, the toolpath here is the toolpath you can activate and deactivate. The toolpath is now located all around the part, so this means we did a good job. Here's the table. Here's the view uh, view window. Here, if I if I can toggle from table view to machine view. Zooming is simple. You want to rotate, you just left click, rotate. You want to zoom in, shift, left click, move the mouse. You want to pan, shift, right click, move the mouse. You get lost, click on this, brings you back to the isometric view and, and that encompasses every view, every view. So now you just go to home and you've got the simulation window. We're going to reset the simulation and start the simulation in continuous mode. Here you, you have a window where you can slow down the simulation or speed it up as you wish. And there's our Camp 3 project.